Hello everyone. Welcome to a beginner's guide to VMware troubleshooting course. In this lecture number four, we are going to discuss about how to troubleshoot ESXi host not responding and ESXi host down issues. As a VMware admin, I'm sure you might have come across scenarios or situations where your ESXi host is not responding and because of which you are not able to manage that host through your vCenter UI. You might have come across scenarios where you are trying to ping to your ESXi host, but ESXi host is not responding to your ping request. And in some scenarios, you might have seen that your ESXi host is responding to your ping request, but still it cannot be managed through your vCenter server and it shows the state as not responding. So in this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about these scenarios and let's understand how do we go and resolve these issues or debug these kind of issues. Let's log in to our vCenter server. So this is our vCenter UI. Let's give a username of our vCenter server is pretty standard administrator at the rate of vSphere.local. Give our vCenter user password. Click here to log in. And as you could see that we are successfully logged in to our vCenter server named as savcsa01.govmlab.local. Now let's go and browse our vCenter inventory. So as you could see that we have a SA data center created within that vCenter server. Let's go and browse that data center. As you could see that we have a cluster named as SA cluster created under this data center. Let's go and browse our SA cluster. And as you could see that we have a two host which are part of this cluster out of these two hosts as you could see that SA ESXi01 seems to be in a healthy state. We don't see any issues on that specific host, but look at the SA ESXi02 host and that host is in not responding state. So if you see that this particular host, our SA ESXi02 host, is in not responding state. So now let's go and understand what could be the probable reason because of which this host is in not responding state and because of which it is not being managed by our vCenter server. So when I say it is not being managed by vCenter server, let's go and try to make some changes to it. Can we do that? Let's go to virtual switches. As you could see that, because this host is in not responding state, we cannot go and make any host specific changes from that particular vCenter UI. And that is the reason all of these options, whether it's a networking section, you do see that storage section, you do see that everything is grayed out. So we will have to go and fix this particular issue. Now let's do the first thing. Let's go and figure it out. Are we able to ping this particular host from our vCenter server? Let's go to our vCenter server and let's validate that is our vCenter server is able to ping to our SA ESXi02 host, the host which is in not responding state. So that's the first troubleshooting we are trying to have a, a network connectivity check. So SA ESXi 02govmlab.local and as you do see that the ping request is not going, which means that our vCenter server is not able to ping to our ESXi host, which is in not responding state. And as you do see that it clearly tells us that a destination host is unreachable. Our vCenter server is not able to reach out to our SA ESXi02. So now let's go and log into our SA ESXi02 host and let's see that what is wrong with that system. Is that system is able to ping to our ESXi host? or our vCenter server. So let's log into our SA ESXi02 host. And as you do see that when we are trying to access our ESXi host through putty session or through SSH, we are trying to access our ESXi host. It is not responding, which means that we cannot connect this ESXi host over the network. And you do see that the connection request is timed out where we are trying to reach out to the system, but it is not responding to any of the any of the reason. And that's the reason our request is getting timed out. So the only way to troubleshoot this issue is 
let's log into our ESXi host DC UI console. And from that DC UI console, let's go and see that what could be the probable issue because of which our vCenter server is not able to communicate to it or our ESXi or we are not able to establish SSH communication. So this is our base ESXi host. As you could see that, press Alt F2 key or before that, let me do the full screen. So as you could see that this is our SA ESXi as you could see that this is our SA ESXi 02 host. Let's give a username as a default username is root and let's provide the password of our root user. And as you could see that we are successfully logged in to our ESXi host DC UI console. And that is a server console through which actually we can log into our system and we can see that what has been wrong with this ESXi host. So we know that it's a connectivity issue. As we know that that's a connectivity issue. So let's go and check out our network management section. Look at the network adapters. And let's check it out. Now, do you see that? Look at here. Our VMNIC 0, if you see that, that is in disconnected state where the VMNIC 1, 2 and 3 are connected state. Now, what does that mean? It means that isn't the case or there is a probability where management connectivity is coming via VMNIC 0 and because of which we are not able to connect to this ESXi host over the network. So let's go and verify that or confirm that is the management connectivity is coming via VMNIC 1 or it's coming via VMNIC 0. So let's go and to verify that let's log into our ESXi shell. And now let's execute the command ESXCFG vSwitch hyphen L. Look at that. What it says, it says that your vSwitch 0 is actually having a uplink connectivity to VMNIC 0. And that VMNIC 0 is actually providing connectivity to our management network. So that is the reason why our ESXi host was not able to was not reachable over the network because the connectivity is being done via VMNIC 0 and that VMNIC 0 is in a disconnected state. So you could also verify the same thing with the ESX CLI command ESX CLI network NIC list. And as you could see that your VMNIC 0 is in down state. Look at the link status. It clearly says that it is in down state. So we have to go and fix the link connectivity and just to make sure that you can also run the command nic get hyphen n vmnic0 and when you execute this command look at the section of link detected the link detected is false and link status is down so it's clearly indicate that there is something wrong with the esxi host physical network connectivity look at your switch port look at the network cable and make sure that you have plugged in cable to the right switch port so let me go because it's a lab environment. So let me go and fix this cable issue or physical network connectivity issue. So now I have fixed the connectivity issue where I have make sure that the cable is been plugged in to the right switch port and I have fixed that connectivity issue. Let's execute this command again. ESX CLI network NIC list and look at that. Look at the state of VMNIC 0. Now it is in up state. Right. So now let's try to log in our ESXi host through the PuTTY session and let's try to establish SSH connectivity to this ESXi host because network connectivity looks good. So press the escape key to come out from the full screen mode and let's log into our ESXi host. Let me open up the new PuTTY session and look at that. As you could see that now we are successfully able to establish our SSH communication to our ESXi host. Run the give the password and as you could see that we are successfully able to log into our host. Now let's execute the command again network nick list. And as you could see that look at that VMNIC zero state. Sorry. Look at that VMNIC zero state. And as you do see that the link state is up. The link state is up. So we are pretty good from that perspective. Now let's go and execute that command, another command, ESX CLI network NIC get hyphen N and VMNIC 0. Press the enter key and 
look at that state the link detected is true and link status is up which means that our host physical network connectivity looks good now and the, the link status is up now so now basically we are good from the connectivity perspective so now let's go back to our vCenter server and let's see that whether our host has been restore that connectivity to our vCenter server but that doesn't seem to be the case now let me refresh that page and even after refreshing the page you do see that our ESXi host SA ESXi 02 host still is in not responding state so the question comes now let's just go and validate network connectivity of ESXi host from vCenter server and make sure that whether vCenter server is able to reach out to that host or not. So let's execute the same command again, ping command to our SA ESXi 02 host. And we do see that a ping replies are coming, which means that our vCenter server is able to establish L2 and L3 connectivity to our ESXi host. And that is the reason our ping requests are going through. So now we have resolved partially, we have partially resolved that connectivity issue. And now ESX, our vCenter server is able to reach out to our ESXi host. But the question still remains the same. Why our ESXi host still is in not responding state, even though our vCenter server is able to reach out to our ESXi host. Is that the issue with the, the agents which are running in our ESXi host? Are they running, are they running in a healthy state? Let's go and validate that as well so let's log into our sa esxi 02 host let's make sure that our host d daemon and our vpx d daemons are running so as you do see that our host d is in running state so no issue with the host d vpxa status let's let's check out our vpxa daemon status or service status vpxa is also running so as you do see that we don't sorry as you do see that we don't see issue with the our agent as well our host service is running on our esxi host our vpx service is running on our esxi host our l2 and l3 connectivity is fine then what is the next probable reason because of which our host is still being shown in the not responding state and that seems to be a l4 connectivity issue it could be the the firewall port which might be blocking our request from vCenter server to our ESXi host. So maybe the firewall rule which are present on that ESXi host might be causing that issue. So let's check out our firewall rule configuration. And for that, execute the command ESXCLI network firewall rule set list. So as you could see that this is the ESXCLI network firewall rule set list is gonna give us all the, the rules which are enabled. And now let's execute the command rule set allowed IP list. When you execute ESX CLI, so let me just highlight this command. It's a very useful command. You can make a note of it. So as you do see that this is the command ESX CLI network firewall rule set allowed IP list, which gonna tell you that what all the IPs are allowed for that specific firewall rule set. And now you might have noticed that for our vSphere client accessibility, the request is only allowed to a host having a IP 172.20.10.202. And what is that IP? Is that our vCenter server IP 172.20.10.202? Let's go and validate that. So let's log into our vCenter server, execute the command. No, that's not the IP of our vCenter server. Our vCenter server is having a IP 172.20. Our vCenter server is having a IP 172.20.10.94, which means that this is the reason why our host is not being managed by our vCenter server, or our vCenter server is not able to reach out to our ESXi host because of the firewall rule which is being configured on our ESXi host and the this vCenter IP is not being added to our firewall list. So let's go and fix that issue. So either you can execute the command. So you can add a vCenter IP in the firewall host firewall by exactly the same command what we have 
executed it so you can just execute this firewall rule set allowed ip you can give that vcenter ip and then we can provide hyphen r and the rule set that is the command we can use it to add our vcenter ip in that vsphere client but let me show you the very simplified way of doing that if we cannot remember such a long command let's log into our esxi host sa hyphen esxi hyphen 02.govmlab.local now let's log into our esxi host with the username as root provide a password click here to log in and as you could see that we are successfully logged in to our esxi host sa esxi 02.govmlab.local now to add a vcenter ip in the host firewall list what you have to do click on networking and there we have a section firewall rules click on firewall rules and there just let me make that list more visible so as you could see that this is the list firewall rules at the host level scroll down and there we do see that there is something called vSphere web client right so you know that that's a port 902 and port 443 which we use it to have a communication channel between vCenter server and ESXi host so select that vSphere web client click on the edit settings and you do see that what is the IP mentioned here is 172.20.10.202 but we don't have a vCenter server IP so let's go and add our vCenter server IP 172.20.10.94 let me cross validate that yeah it's the same IP 172.20.10.94 so we have added our vCenter IP in the host firewall list click on OK and as you could see that the rule set has been updated as you do right see here the rule set has updated now let's go to our ESXi host let's execute the same command rule set allowed IP list and look at that our vSphere client rule set now will be having a our vCenter server IP right there so we have removed that we have added our vCenter IP in the firewall list let's log into our vCenter server let's refresh the page and look at that we don't see that host is not responding issue anymore and now as you could see that our host SAESXI02 host is in a healthy state. So now this concludes our lecture on how do we go and troubleshoot host not responding issues or sometimes we see the host is pinging but still it's not being managed by a vCenter server. We hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thanks for your time. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.